This morning, I want us to share about the paradox of Hosanna, a message which is actually geared to inspire us to know that Jesus, when he came, I love the children who are able to present part of this. There were events that actually marked, one of them is that he was able to walk into Jerusalem. He had the Last Supper, and eventually when he went up there, he was crucified among the sinners. And there he died and he said, it is finished, and that marks the Good Friday. And this, as we look at this, one of the things you need to know that Jesus is no longer on the cross. And Jesus, as we look even during the resurrection, is no longer in the tomb. But there are critical things you need to know that during the Good Friday is when he marked and declared the power of the cross. What I actually want to hinge on as a trump, the victory he declared in our lives. Amen? For many of us who have visited people when they are almost dying, actually they show glory. When they are struggling, they're struggling. When they get to the moment that they want to breathe their last, they will always shine. For many of you who don't visit them, I want to tell you, the visitation ministers know this. There is an eventual glory that manifests itself in death. But just prior to that, Jesus gives us a signal, and I want us to reflect on that, the paradox of Hosanna. The story of the triumphal entry, which we are going to read in a short while, is one of the many of uh, contrasts. The contracts which I actually want to refer to as paradox contain applications which we should be able to heed as believers. It's the story of the king who came as a lowly servant on a donkey. You see, he comes in the grand entry, but he's on a donkey. I don't know why many of us could actually allow our president to ride on such. Not a prancing steed, not in a royal robes, but on the clothes of the poor and the humble. It is a paradox um, of Jesus Christ who comes not only to conquer by force, because you know, if actually the army would come to this place and say, I am the king, they would declare by force, the way you saw recently when many people were demonstrating. But Jesus comes and shows this through love, through grace, through mercy, through his own sacrifice for his own people. He is, is not a kingdom of armies and splendor, but a lawlessness, uh, of, lawless, of lawlessness and servanthood. He conquers not nations, but hearts and minds. And that is why we are celebrating today. His message is one of peace with God, not of temporal peace. If Jesus has made a triumphal entry, yeah, uh, in our hearts. Then he reigns there. He reigns there. He comes there. It is not an issue of saying he's on the cross. There are many denominations. I believe, I hope Elder Philip will not get there even as a church. I saw one minister carrying a very big cross. One of the things is I know what Christ did. Big cross, uh, almost actually 300 grams. That is very heavy. Yeah. Jesus reigns in us. His cross is in our hearts. Amen. His victory is what he declared by grace. It is not by the robe and the many cross and the size of the same. I know many of us would love us to cut. Please, if God helps you to sit where decisions are made, let that not be carried when some of us are still ministers here. He died on the cross. Not that you continue to carry the cross but you may be able to walk with him with victory in your heart. So he reigns there with peace and love. And as his followers, we exhibit those same qualities and the world sees the true king living and reigning in triumph in us. So I want us to read from the book of Luke chapter 19, verse 28 to 40. Uh, Luke chapter 19, uh, verse 28 to 40. Um, this is the NRV version. I want us to read together. Just follow with me. It's on the screen. After Jesus had said this, he went ahead going up to Jerusalem. As he approached Bethphage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a cold tied there which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. 
If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Say, the Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it just as he had told them. As they were untying the cord, his owners asked them, why are you untying the cord? They replied, the Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on, their cloth, on the cord, and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. When he came near the place where the road goes down to Mount, Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. Amen? Now, this is the paradox of the king. The Hosanna, the one that is lifted up, the children attempted to define Hosanna. Hosanna basically means the one that is exalted. But how comes the exalted one was sacrificed? How comes the great man was punished? How come this great man, who actually God sent him to be with us, decides to come and make what we call the grand entry, but on a donkey? How comes the acclimation that people were putting, they were just clothes that he may ride over, and eventually the king who was exalted, as the people were giving the praises, these are the people of Jerusalem. They also accepted that he be put on the cross and they say, who do we release for us? They say Barnabas. It's a paradox of this Hosanna that I want to reflect in this Easter season of how God so loved us. And he didn't look back. He went and did it. And after that, he said, it is finished. He declared that, and it is a great victory. The paradoxical grand entry on a cult. How can actually we have a grand entry, but on a cult? It is said that in the old days, as much as there were no vehicles, the kings would ride on horses. They would go on things that were lavish. It's like one day you come, and you see all of us pastors, we are seated at the back, this is what is the grand entry here. Because the king is coming on a call. But in this, I realized that what was grand was not the entry, but the Jesus demonstration that my ministry on earth has been accomplished. I am ready to go on the, on the cross. It was his last leg. It was his last love. It was, you see, when even he sits with the disciples and eats with them a meal. So, it is his last leg. It was not that grand per se, because he would not have actually used a donkey to ride them. What about the paradox of untying the tight cord? When Jesus wanted to make the entry there, many of you know that if actually the governor would come to this place, the first people would come to this place are the security to ensure everything is in order. Buenas Yeah, if you want to go and celebrate, like some of you will be celebrating this. There are preparations ahead of you. But now, Jesus is coming for the grand entry. In fact, he has no motorcade. Even the donkey is borrowed. And even the people who are borrowed, they are told they will be able to ask. That is how it is. It's so paradoxical that indeed it's called the grand entry, that the Hosanna is coming to die. But a good thing he knew what was going to happen. It is borrowed cloth. Amen. I told you that when some of us were preaching, uh, when we were in campus, we used to have one good tie, which we used to share among the preachers. And the gospel would spread. Amen. This is grand. It is nice. Nowadays, people want fitting clothes. We would even actually, even coats, because we used to only to buy shirts. There were people who were good designers. There are places we'd enter, and then you get a good long that. But we used to borrow tie, we would share the tie and the coat as preachers. This is the same thing here. Jesus 
Not all calls or donkeys were privileged, including those who are tied. Because he says, you go and find one. Actually, he asked that he gets one. The call meant a young donkey. It was one of the unexpected that he chooses. And the one that actually was going to be untied, he didn't know. He didn't know that it was going to be untied. So the Hosanna, the king, who knew his mission, who knew what he was going to do, becomes actually a, a paradox in the sense of his means to get to accomplish the means where God has sent him. Now, in this paradox, we see that the cord only became useful after being untied. When Jesus asked the disciples to go ahead and say, you'll find one cold and tied, go and untie it. So it defines meaning. One thing I want to tell you for many of us who carry the cross every day, you will only find meaning as long as the cross is in your heart. Amen. When the cross is put away, you have no use. In fact, when the cold started carrying Jesus, the people were shouting and they were shouting. Now, Jesus was not stepping on the red carpet that the president would do. Who was stepping on the red carpet? They called Buana Suesan. That's why I want you to know this, so that you don't continue. To, I saw people carrying the cross today, and they were really laboring. I say, these people should come and hear the message of grace. Praise the Lord. We are struggling to carry things. We will graciously walk in closed doors. Say amen. amen. Buana Suesan. Buana Sifiwe. This is the paradox that indeed, we, when we carry Jesus, you have a meaning. When you will introduce yourself as a child of God, they will see a meaning in you, in the place where. When you put him away, by the way, no one, I don't know where that donkey is. And the Bible does not even mention, after Jesus entered and left, his story is gone. So it had only as meaning as long as it carried Jesus. Now, Jesus was on a mission. And he was going to go to the place he was going in Beth Fanage and Bethany. But I wish he was walking this journey every day. This donkey would be collecting offering even today. <laughs> you know, how much is good to be able to sit closer to a prominent person? Not just a minute, but forever. This donkey found a meaning when it was untied. I want you to understand that. And when it accepted that Jesus climbed on my back. Yeah. Amen. This is the cross men of you don't want to carry every day. Kuna watu hapa wamefungwa. Kila siku. They cannot dance like this. Wamefungwa miguna misuli. Nasi wagonjwa. They don't have arthritis. And the other thing is they cannot allow Jesus to be in their hearts and on their back every day. They are always on their culture. They are always in their own perception. Jesus wants to release you. That is the coming of Easter. Amen. It is not just about many things. Hosanna, the one that is raised up, is not just raised on the cross in that place. He is to be with us every day. I pray that we will be released in Jesus' name. Amen. We had crossroads as Christians many times. We seem to have him, but not to allow him to walk with us. He says, go and untie him. And then bring him here, that I may ride on him. So it's good to wear the cross on the reed, but allow him to be in your heart. Amen. That is Good Friday. I already mentioned the paradox of untying the tied cord. The cord that was, un was actually untied was too young. It was unexpected. Uh, many donkeys for you, if you've seen a donkey carry something, you may not want to use a young one because you may want an older one. And many times when Christ comes and is being celebrated, he actually can be celebrated among the unexpected people. You may look down on yourself and think that you are single. You may look at yourself and maybe you have gone through a lot of burden, but Jesus will untie you. Amen. That is what he declares on the cross. He will untie you to be used. He will say, bring. And then people will say, Uyo And he will say, the master wants to use him. Christ chose one cult. He may not choose many of us. Amen? Just one of you. One of you. Amen? Say amen. You may be the one. 
Not all of you. Praise the Lord. And when he was speaking in one of the parables, he's not in my nose, he says two will be walking together. One will be taken, another one will be left. Two will be in the field, one will be taken, another will be left. Please, woe unto you if you will be left. May the untie, may you be ready. Mimi nikisikia wanafungua watu nitaanza kudance na mna hivi. Alafu watasema ule mwa mafraia afunguliwe. Na wale wamenuna wafanya nini wabaki. This is the story here. It is a paradox. Many of us are not ready of these things of the Lord. We need to be enthusiastic about these things of God. And God will be willing to use you because you can refuse. One of the things you also need to know about God's use, he says that I have placed before you an open door that you may choose, choose life that you may live. This untying will not be like Jesus who come every day and hammer rema word through the reverend that please accept him every day. It will be by virtue of you just willingly one day choose and say, God, I choose to carry your cross. This is the thing. It will not be a constant reminder every day. Although we try every day, but woe unto you if you will not be able to do that. The paradox of suffering for us to live. Imagine when Jesus is entering the grand entry. Being Jesus God, Jesus man, he knew what was ahead of him. Luke writes very well because he writes in a chronological manner the things and the events that happened prior to Jesus' suffering. So it's not a mixture. So he knows that actually after I have entered to these people and I have declared to them that I am the king, I will eventually be sacrificed and I will accomplish God's mission. So when people are actually giving him all the praises, He's looking ahead, and he knows that there are no celebration. Have you ever gone to a wedding, and I think this has never happened, and people are celebrating, particularly after the, 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 the couple has been tied and they are in the, in the reception area, and there is no food, or let's say there is no cake. There is an eventual suffering that is coming. And they are celebrating, and that time people were joyous. One of the things I need to tell you in the exposition of that passage is even the people that were celebrating Jesus at that time were not celebrating him that he has come to be actually an eventual deliverer. It was a momentous and the, the temporal expectation that he was going to actually do something for them. But for him, when they say the Hosanna, the one that died on the cross and is celebrated the way he was celebrated, he was going to suffer that you may live. The Bible says, unless the tree is, da, is cut down, it will not be able to sprout again. Unless Christ goes to the cross, we may not live. Jesus died so that I may live. Amen? Amen. Jesus died so that I may live. It's a paradox of life. There is suffering that comes to all of us as Christians. Many of us actually remind even our parents when we work hard, particularly if you are doing kazi and mjengo, and people ask you money, say, this is hard and money. Jesus did not refuse to release the hard and life on the cross. He breathed the last and said, I have loved these people. In fact, they don't know what they were doing. The Hosanna, the one that was exalted. And he was put, you know why they, actually for many of you who didn't understand, maybe next year I'll preach this message of the cross. The people that were actually crucified were normally crucified on a hill so that the people may see them. Now, this exalted king, the Hosanna, that we are talking about here, is exalted. In fact, for many theologians that they draw his cross, this cross was higher than the other thieves, that you may see his suffering so that you may live. Amen. Maybe some of us have not seen the suffering of Christ, and we anticipate to suffer every day. God is inviting us to introspect this contract that he died so that I may live. He died that you may have a name. He was innocent, okay, to deliver the guilt. How many of us who are innocent here would want to die for me? For example, nikifanya hapa makosa elda, ukisikia wanaongea hapa kwa yesu, unasema, please, nifige mimi. Buana suwe sana. This is what Jesus is doing. He's saying, no, 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 not unto you, but to me. 
in Jesus. None of you, I know you are Christians. None of you would suffer even for your husband. If you are seated to your husband, look at them. Will you suffer for me? <laughs> she can't suffer for me. It's the truth of the matter. But she's my beautiful, my wife. You get it. None of you can suffer for your boyfriend. I've seen people run. <laughs> I think the only story was when we had the, that, that car that plunged in the vehicle in the sea, and God forbid, and rest the, the parted in the tunnel, so, and the children and the mother were tied together. I think that was better. Who literally would die for somebody? But that is the message of the grace. Now, if you're seated in this place, and you're wondering about Easter, about this. It is that Christ died that you may live. Some of you need to go and actually die. Not die for some people. Accept that Christ forgave you. We sometimes forgiven many things and we don't forgive. We don't forgive. When Jesus was even actually being crucified and all those things were done, he, was, he said, forgive. You saw the story here of Peter trying to chop off the, the ear of, of one of the accuser in that place. Jesus said, what have you done, Peter? And this is the message I want to speak to us this Easter. Because I want you to go and celebrate. Because it is one of the greatest message of grace that the innocent died for the guilt. When people have trumped on your life, you need to wake up and look to God and see the lavish love he has done for us. Amen? When you see some of the painful stories that you have gone through, hey, my brother Simon, okay? When you are huge, when you remember that, remember Christ. Amen. Don't remember the pain in Jesus' name. And that is what Jesus did for us. He was innocent that we may live. That we may not overdwell on the pain of many things that have happened to our lives. Many times we are reminded that we become painful. In the year 2016, I attempted to write a book from that time and I've never finished and I've told you the story that that left us. When I came to ministry, I had a lot of bitterness because I was forced to use my surname, which is a guesser. It belonged to my father that was absent all of his life. And every time I would mention him, I would cry. I remember when I was looking for a scholarship, they asked me, tell me about your father. The interview ended completely until I was given a soda to drink <laughs> and awarded the scholarship. It ended. So at one point again, in 2015, in a Bible study, when you are in the theological school, uh, the then the dean of student asked us to give some stories about our families. Again, it came to my mind and I cried. She said, no, you ain't denied. I said, you have to go and forgive your dad. That's why I took almost a year searching for my father against the expectation of my mother. And finally, I found where he was. I was told that you will not eat in that house because he has never forgiven. You will die. But you know, I found where he, he used to live around five in the evening. And I had gone to Uganda where I normally tell you I came from. And um, I was hungry. So I was to choose between the hunger to die out of hunger, okay, or to die out of the curse, which I don't know. So I said, I will not accept to die hunger. So when I was served food, I said, Lord, you know I'm born again. Allow me eat this food that I may live and continue with my journey. <laughs> I think that's why we pray. We pray for different. And I ate. And here I am. But now the story here is, out of that year, I think it was prior to my full appointment as a pastor, I had served for internship. Um, after that year, it's a year that we got our car. Well, it's a year we bought our first two plots. And, and I said, God, there is power in forgiveness. When you release, actually when I found there, I released him. And uh, well, I found he was dead. Eh? So I was told the grave is a little bit longer distance. <laughs> and, uh, but this is the thing that you should not lavish any extra suffering on your son. Amen? Some of us are putting, when you release it, you become okay. One of my children used to teach others when I was in the children's center that every time you don't forgive, it's like putting a tomato that actually is, 
is decomposing on your back every day, every day. So at the end of the day, you'll have several sacks of tomatoes on your back and you will not carry. Christ carried the sacks of many things that you may live. That is the message of the cross. Many of you have chosen to suffer. And some of you are actually in mental sicknesses, diabetic, you know. I used to have a friend of mine when their father was giving them property. By chance, you know, there are people who are very cunning. They can just make the surveyor, instead of him walking this trade, he walks like this. And then you find that part of your portion triangularly, no, triangularly, it has gone to the other side. So the man had a lot of bitterness every day. And he died out of anger. Not just the anger that actually shocks the heart. You just wake up every one morning. You can't accept that your brother took this. He was innocent that you may live. While many of us are guilty and desire to live, I want to ask you that you may need to respect and introspect the innocent. It's the paradox of the cross. Amen? The paradox of the exalted king. Was Jesus exalted? Why would Jesus actually was there anyone to give Jesus a carpet to walk on? Was there anyone to give Jesus a meaning? Why would the people that were just in any place come and just make the noise and finally make the noise and allow him and say, crucify him? It's a paradox of the exalted king. Our governor in Transoya the other day told the president the truth. He said, President, don't accept these sweet words people are telling you. Walk on the ground and see what is happening. This is the thing here. That a king can be fooled. Buana <laughs> Swesan. He is being exalted and being given a lot of acclamation when no one was meaning the same. It's a paradox. And they say, who would actually carry the king and exalt and crucify him? Hmm? This is the paradox of the exalted king. Jesus was exalted, yet he seems to have no regard. No one had even prepared him a horse to ride on. Sheer paradox. You walk in as a leader, and the boardroom is not ready. Where was the PA? Where were the secretary? Where are the disciples who prayed? He's saying he's doing a grand entry. I am going to visit Eldoret where I was born and now I'm the president. And yet you come here, you realize the security is in a mess. He rode on a colt, yet he was a king. He did not step on the red carpet. The way some of you, you carry Jesus. You carry Jesus, but he doesn't step on that. It's a paradox. He's great when he's in your heart. Imagine you are Christian. You know, you are not going to be a Christian. You know, as pastors, we love front seats. I have one of my friends, he's not a pastor, but he's a pastor by association. He said, I don't sit at the back. So even if you go to a political meeting, if there's no seat there, you go home. <laughs> Look at Jesus. He's not stepping on the red carpet. I want us to respect this during this season. Amen. Amen. And we will see his love. And we will see his message. He rides on simple servants. How can you be exalted <coughs> and yet sacrifice? Was this betrayal? How can you be exalted and yet sacrifice? Unfortunately, there were people that praised Jesus also and lavished on him, but they didn't recognize him as a savior. It's a paradox of that. It's a contrast. And I want us to be able to look at this and know that Jesus was not thwarted. In fact, I will be coming to that uh, later on and being able to make us understand this. They welcome him out of their desire for messianic deliverer. Someone who would lead them in a revolt against Rome. You know, he told them, I am the king. And so when he came that day, while Jesus was seeing the eventual death 
which happened on the Good Friday we are celebrating. Then he was, they were realizing today war will break out. It's like going into the war and all of you na kunja ngumi. Na mutu anaweka china zema, war is over, we have won. It demoralized some soldiers who like the physical and the booze and the other things. I know there are many people. It's like coming to sing here and you don't sing and say, God has answered. You just say amen and we continue. You will be demoralized. This is where the crowd was. God is calling us to several things that we may carry him who is exalted. I have mentioned this. And that we should not confuse his praises and fact that we are walking on the red carpet. Buana Suesa. You have only a name as long as you are carrying Hosanna. It is not the cross. It is not the collar. We are desiring that we also start wearing a collar. Soon we will be able to be there. Because I realize in this area, the people don't know that the pastor has come. The king has come. I may lose the, I may lose the cold forever. Leave alone now the horse. But before it comes, do not confuse the praises of people. Praise the Lord. I was telling people in the visitation that God is also inviting us also to do good without taking selfies. God is inviting us to be able to know that it's not out of those commendations. That praise and worship team, you can sit down and know what they said, but you feel okay. Praise the Lord. This is the call Jesus is inviting us. We love good names. We love good food. Our wives and ladies in the house, you like good words. You like good touch. But Jesus is saying that do without those commendations. Amen? I see when the president gives commendation, people stick in their house. Remove them that Christ will be exalted in your heart. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 8. The Bible says, I am the Lord. That is my name. I will not yield my glory to another or my praises to idols. There are many of us who have taken God to be equivalent to our success. There are many of us who have confused the praises of God. The donkey is not mentioned any longer. The praises was not for him. And Christ himself, as much as he might have received part of the praises, they were not the praises that meant for his, actually, his coming. He shares his glory with no one. Amen? And when people don't praise you, do good. One of my pastors in Sitam, actually, is trying to help one of the cousins. And that cousins hate that pastor bitterly because of their family. But the kid, the kid is needy. Hata kipewa pesa na sema pesa yako sitaki. But we know that this pastor does. He has chosen to be sending the money to buy a proxy. And this kid receives the money with thanksgiving. Receive this message of proxy. In Jesus' name. We are something because we carry our son. That is a call that God is telling us. We are as only as good as you carry Hosanna. <clears throat> John chapter 15, verse 5b, he says, apart from me, you can do nothing. When he talks about dwelling in Christ, this cross, this cross, this Easter, you are as good as you are with Christ. Amen? The day you put him down, unaenda uko kukula nyas na ako, nao, Punda wengine. One as we said. You are as good as we are with Christ. Continue confessing him every day, every month, and you'll be something. You'll be something. You'll continue walking on the carpet. The good thing is that travel entry for us, it continues every day. It's a process called sanctification. Every day, wake up every morning and say, Nioshwe, that I may be clean, and that will be good. That called received the acclamation so long as it was with Jesus. And that is a message I want us to know. We carry every day. They called God acclamation so long as Jesus was on the back. 
after biashara ya Yesu ilisha ilisha sasa don't allow the business of Jesus to end amen don't allow this carrying of the cross you know part of the thing that I am telling you I saw some denomination people carry the cross I saw them struggle with a big cross on the road God would want you to carry daily not just during Easter and that would be a blessing to you do not be excited about voices of acclamation some of them are for your crucifixion when they were saying yes yes they were doing it for crucifixion the war of the jungle says that always mislead your enemy for many of you are in the corporate world i read all books by fact that i'm a path and a reader there's a book called 48 laws of power one of them is mislead your enemy and the hyenas do well. When they want the prey, they take the prey, they take the prey, they take the prey. The prey realize that it's no longer in the crowd. And then it is eaten mercilessly. It's the law of the jungle. It's the law of the world. So people can praise you. In fact, actually, the author of that book says, if you want to destroy him, lift him up. Then you leave him. He will drop down dead. If you are not a good reader, I'm proking you. Go and just read that book for your own introspection. So not all praises are actually for your acclamation. Do not receive every praise. Sorry for my staff who are here. Would you give me commendation? I must develop the hard skin not to receive all praises from all of you, even if you don't want to say amen. <laughs> that is a good leadership. And Jesus knew it. The acclamation that Jesus received on this grand entry, majority of it was fake. Very fake. It's the same voices because he was in Jerusalem. <laughs> it's the same, same ones. Two, the same tongue cannot speak two things differently. Praise the Lord. This is a message. Jesus alikufa isiku. Do not receive all praises. Keep focus on the price. Jesus loved the world. And he died for us. He loved it to the core. <coughs> I want to conclude. <coughs> Jesus Christ is exalted in our hearts. He is the king. In our hearts. Meozit. <coughs> Choose humility as you serve him, because it is a call on which he rode. He did not choose big things. Many people have told me, the other day I was arrested by police. They arrest me many times. I don't know whether they do that to you, but they release me as many times as they do also. So you say, this is Sitam, the church, the people that do their churches in tents. Yeah, so we are known that we are not doing big things. We should start doing big things. Humility. Although many of you think this is a big church, this policeman say, this is Sitam, I know them, they have a lot of money, but they do churches in tents. I told that police officer, release me today, I don't have money. I'll come to see you later. <laughs> Choose humility. I'm praying God to help me to be humble. Now, the, the other paradox of humility is that the day you realize you have it, they have said you have lost it. <laughs> Because they realize, the day you realize you are humble, you have become proud. <laughs> so just continue riding on the, on the donkey. Don't know any day that you are actually this. <clears throat> make a carpet for him. However small it is, he will make his grand entry in your affairs. That is the paradox of our son. The small carpet you give him every day and say, God, Hosanna, I have accepted you in my family. I've accepted you in my affair. Some of us actually, when you look at Jesus and his works, we never acknowledge him even in our achievements. There are days just to tell God, thank you for this small business. Thank you for this small achievement. Make a carpet for him, however small. People were able to remove their clocks and say, Jesus, walk on this. Amen. Jesus would want to walk on our carpets. Carpets made from our clothes and clocks because he is our God. He will make a grand entry. That is the paradox of the Hosan. The day you allow Jesus to ride on you, he will come in a grand way. Grand means he will come in a big way in Jesus' name. Amen? In our birthdays, when you make that 
carpet for him. He will come in a grand entry. And there he will reside with you. You might be loosely walking with him around this Easter, but Christ is on a mission for your life. You could just be on your own. When he came, the people saw their own mission. But he is on a mission. Walk around. Focus on him. He gives meaning to anyone seeking to be used. And all of us, God is seeking to use us. This is the message of Easter. Are you willing to give Jesus a part that he may reside in? That his eventual suffering will not just be about songs and reflecting on the cross that he died on. I want to wish you a very happy Easter holiday and pray that you allow him to make a grand entry. In your small house, in your small way, in your small celebration, in your family that has a lot of struggles, just give him an inch. He will make a grand entry. He will ride there. Amen? And there you will be with him. May this not be a paradox to you. But I pray that he reveal to you who he is to you in Jesus' name. Amen? I want us to pray. Let's close our eyes. I want us to reflect on the goodness of God and thank him. Because when we give him an inch, he's able to come in meters and kilometers. When we allow him to ride on our backs, he comes and resides in presides of our hearts. And I pray that we're not going to be nocturnal Christians. The Christians that look unto God at certain season, like a season of Easter, or just when we have a service, and when it's broad daylight, we lose him. I want to pray that our children, as young as they are, they have done what they've done in this place. They will allow the grand entry, the victorious entry of Christ. He who dwells and be, is able to be with anyone that gives him room. He who never changes his mission, even the praises and the words of acclamation are extended to him. He was, he is, and he shall be our savior. And Lord, I pray that you sanctify our minds. I pray that this particular morning, majority of us or some of us could be in this place and we are yearning, oh Lord, for an encounter with you. You have paid the price on the cross. When you walked and others acclaimed that you are the king, they went ahead and sacrificed and crucified you. But in that death, Lord, as suffering is and painful as it was, you declared healing and you declared victory for our lives. I want to thank you. I want to honor you. I want to pray that, Lord, you're going to forgive us of every iniquity, of every sin, oh Lord, as a people, as a church, as a nation, in the name of Jesus, that we may live, that we may carry your cross every day. You are our Savior and you are our God. May you help us even to appropriate this message you've given unto us this Easter. We thank you and we bless you.